Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call this special meeting of the Board of Education to order. It is 7.14 p.m. on Tuesday, August 24th, 2021. We have a quorum. We are gonna start with the invocation and the pledge by Mrs. Wiltsey. We beseech you, almighty God, to bless this meeting of the Board of Education. So guide and rule over our hearts and our minds that all deliberations and decisions may be in accordance with your will and lead to the advancement and welfare of the community of Stratford, whom we serve. Amen. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, I'd also like to have a moment of silence for Elizabeth Rogers, a nurse at Franklin School. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So typically the next portion will be student representatives. They are not um, named yet for this school year, so they will begin at our September meeting. So the next item on our agenda is the presentation by Dr. Gaeta on our school summer program. Thank you. <clears throat> so as you know, this summer was a very busy summer for us. We had um, ESSER funds that were able to support an expanded summer school program for us and other activities. Um, we had some great attendance uh, in our general regular summer school program, which runs grades 7 through 12. In grades 7 and 8, we had uh, four courses that were offered. We had 40 students who attended and 39 successfully completed their coursework in language arts, math, language arts in seventh and eighth grade, and pre-algebra for eighth grade. Um, in our nine through 12 program, grades nine through 12, there were 13 courses offered, 176 students uh, attended, and 173 students um, were able to recover credit. So we were very excited about that, that program. Um, we also had a program for K through 6, a very unusual program, uh, sort of atypical from the summer programs that we usually hold for uh, that age group. The name of the program was SEEP, K6 Summer Engagement and Enrichment Program. It was a two-week in-person learning program for students currently in grades K through 6. The students received a non-traditional summer experience that focuses around hands-on STEM-based activities, art and music, with an emphasis on movement and mindfulness to support their social and emotional development. Um, the uh, individuals who were involved received some great feedback from parents um, who were very excited about the program, saying their children were really happy um, to be able to participate. That program had approximate, uh, that program had 169 students in the first session and 18 staff members. And in the second session, there were 165 students with 17 staff members. In addition, uh, we had our um, annual ESY or extended school year program. ESY serves the needs of students receiving special education services in our district. All of our programming is based off of the recommendations from the Students Planning and Placement Team and is driven by students' IEPs. This summer, we provided targeted individual support for our students through an in-person learning environment after a summer of a fully virtual program in 2020. The staff provided a learning envi environment that has allowed students to recoup and retain skills from the 2021 school year while benefiting from the structured, safe environment of our schools. That program had some outstanding numbers. We had 429 students who attended, and we had 26 teachers, 59 paraprofessionals, and 24 other staff. So that was, a very, that was also held in, in several locations. 
We also, uh, this summer, held a new program. Typically, this program is held after school um, at the secondary level at our high schools and middle schools. It's called the 21st Century Program. Uh, this, this year, the um, focus um, was on Empower Leadership, and it provided students the tools to solve problems and complex skills through teamwork and collaboration, adaptability while tapping into their natural leadership skills. So for, the, for Monday through Thursday in that program, um, Empower Leadership would come to either our uh, um, middle school or high school and run <coughs> leadership type activities for students and then on the fifth day they would go up to their obstacle course in, um, I believe it was East Windsor, um, to attend. So we had 55 students at the middle school who attended and 50, 50 students at the high schools. And the hope is that these students will return for our um, school year program and be active in that program as well. So we really saw it even as a recruiting opportunity. This year, uh, for the first time, we had a program, well, it's not really the first time. We, we've held this before, but this was a little bit different in the way that it was run. Uh, the name of the program was Kickstart Kindergarten, and this was for students who did not attend preschool in, um, in an effort to prepare them for kindergarten. So we had some of our teachers um, who were able to uh, work this summer came in. There were 20 students. And actually, there were some sessions held for parents as well. We had 15 parents who were involved and four teachers. And that had the, uh, some great, great results there. Um, I stopped in on a couple of those. And there was a lot of, they had um, different uh, museums come. And some aquarium come, came and brought their programs as well. So it was, again, an engaging kind of activity, but gave some of our students who have not attended a program before a sense of what the school day might look like. So some routines, getting used to the classroom, and some activities that they would be expected to do in kindergarten. So that was really kind of a neat thing. So in summary for our students, we had over 1,100 students who attended summer programs this year and 175 Stratford staff involved. Remember this year, transportation was provided for students. Um, students attended tuition free. And funding for future summer programs is, pl is um, planned, right? Mrs. Nanjuni for uh, 20, 2022 and 2023. We also, though, I just wanted to say our uh, staff, um, certified staff, has been very involved over the summer as well. Uh, we've had some sixth graders, sixth grade, sixth graders, sixth grade teachers uh, attending uh, Open SIA training. Uh, we've had uh, three of our um, Portrait of a Graduate Facilitators attend training by the Bar Foundation. We've had four of our teachers attending AP training at Taft, excuse me, <clears throat> um, and two of our teachers attend attending uh, Environmental Guidelines for Excellence in the K-12 classroom. Eight of our teachers in the Social Studies Department attended five-day training in Social Studies curriculum. And we had 80 certified staff members who attended a four-day um, workshop on accelerated learning, which was part of our uh, reopening plan for the coming school year. So a lot of activity going on, a lot of excitement, and everybody's gearing up for the opening of school. Thank you so much, Dr. Gita. Thank you. Any questions from board members? I do. Yes, yeah. Mr. Pagella. Uh, how did you recruit the students for the various programs? Okay, so uh, for the 712 program, it was open just the, the way that um, our continuing year usually runs summer school program. Um, for our um, K6 program, um, information was sent out to parents and there were some applications. We were limited um, in terms of um, the, the, the size of the classes in that. Um, but we had a, still had a very good turnout, 169 students and 165 students, yeah, and we felt very good about that. Um, the kindergarten uh, program, the preschool um, kickstart kindergarten program, we looked at the entrant, the uh, students who um, were registered, who indicated that they had not had preschool experience, and uh, the person who, uh, Lindsay Dickey, who was the um, director of Parents Place, um, um, reached out to parents to ask them if they would be interested in this program. So um, it, it was 
Good. You know, it's really, in a short amount of time, because we didn't know about when we were going to get ESSER funds and things like that. So uh, it was a quick turnaround time, but the planning went very smoothly. Very good. Very good. Any other questions? Well, so I don't have a question. I would just like to thank Dr. Data and the entire team for really pulling together quite the summer for so many of our kids who need social, emotional, and some gap filling. So thank you very much. It sounded like a, a really good summer cycle. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you again, Dr. Hayden. Moving on to the next item, the Administrative Executive Report. Welcome to Dr. Sunday. Um, if you haven't met him yet, our new superintendent. All right. Yeah. Good evening. First report. <laughs> Good evening. Thank you very much. And uh, it's an honor and it's a pleasure to be here. Um, it's been a, a rather interesting summer to decide to become a superintendent, right? Um, but nonetheless, it has been a good summer, it's been a productive summer, it's been a summer of growth. And <clears throat> I really just uh, want to take a moment from my chair, superintendent, to really commend Dr. Gaeta uh, and the work that her and her team did with the summer program. I mean, you just got a quick overview. Uh, I'm not sure if she uh, provided a final number. We had something. Over 1,100 students engaged in our summer program off offerings from the academic programs to the enrichment programs. And that's a powerful statement um, and number in the context of what the previous year looked like for, for educators and students everywhere. Um, <clears throat> so for us right now, we are a mere uh, week or so away from uh, kids coming back. And right now, our focus is highly uh, directed towards opening schools. Okay. I will tell you this, as a new superintendent uh, with a focus on opening schools, I have been um, thoroughly impressed with our community, uh, the community of Stratford, uh, and more specifically, our leadership. Um, as you know, we had a moment of silence. Um, this has been an emotionally challenging summer for Stratford, with some of the, the losses we've experienced. And as we work with our, our school leaders, um, specifically Eric Conrad and his professional community. It's just been very impressive to watch him do the work of keeping that, that professional community together through hard times. And to me, that's an asset uh, that really speaks to the spirit of the Stratford community. We're making progress. I, I feel like we're, we're staffed in all the right places. We're still doing work to make sure we staff at the tutoring positions. Over the last two days, and we just culminated today, we held our leadership retreat, which is really a powerful experience um, with all district uh, school leaders and district leaders all in the same place right here in this beautiful facility uh, at Stratford High School. Uh, the focus of our retreat was really centered on a few objectives. Uh, first, we wanted to welcome and introduce any new members of our uh, leadership professional community. We also wanted to discuss district priorities as they relate to academics, culture, climate, um, town development, and other operations. The other piece we wanted to do was engage in organizational leadership capacity uh, building. And then also engage in collaborative work to unpack uh, challenges and problems and also develop strategic solutions as we look to open up the year. Uh, but the one thing I've heard uh, dating back to March when the board appointed me was this need for alignment and coherence. And um, I would say, uh, based on feedback from my colleagues uh, over the last two days, that we're making steps in the right direction. Um, I would like to extend an appreciation to uh, Board Member Wolsey and Board Member Rodia. They were able to join us for a few of the workshops. They probably know more now about education philosophy. Uh, education, strategic planning, and district priorities. But it was, I think for, for me, as well as my colleagues, it was, it was important for us to see you there, right? Um, it was another way to demonstrate your support beyond just the decisions that we make, you know, at this bench. So, uh, moving on, we are planning on convocation. The convocation is gonna be done right here in our time, it's gonna be in Pender's Field. We have uh, a nice list of speakers queued up including our board chair, our mayor, and our teacher of the year. Um, we are anticipating that the weather is going to co uh, will cooperate, uh, but if it doesn't, we'll be ready to pivot as well. And then last, uh, the most um, recent high-profile um, issue or challenge that we're, I shouldn't call it a challenge, but um, issue that we're working with 
is the executive order that was issued by the governor most recently about man mandated vaccines. So we're in the process of working with um, our union leadership across bargaining units, and our commitment is to make sure that we make this process for our colleagues as efficient and expeditious as possible. Um, for me, it's been a good process so far, just knowing that our union leaders are coming to those conversations and saying, hey, how do we get this done? And uh, as for right now, that's it for the superintendent's report. Dr. Sunday. Questions from board members? Great, seeing none, thank you again. Thank you. Moving on to Mrs. Mangini's report. Sure, good evening everyone. Good evening. As Dr. Sunday mentioned, it's certainly been a busy summer, but I agree it's been a very productive one as well. Um, as you know, we did work through the ARC ESSER grant application and it was submitted to the state on August 13th. So we're now awaiting approvals. We're also on target to complete the annual education financial system report, or the EFS report, formerly the EB001, um, that is due by September 1st, and we should be fine meeting that deadline. We've also been working with the um, auditors for fiscal year 21. These are town auditors, and of course, the board that is considered a department within that audit. They've been in the business office um, for about a week and a half. They start pulling their testing at this time of year. And that town audit is required by the state to be completed by December 31st. So in September, we are planning to at least provide the board with an unaudited year-end report as we've gotten in the past for fiscal year 21. So we've been busy, but all is good. Thank you. Questions? Okay, seeing none. Thank you again, Mrs. Mangini. Moving on to the consent agenda. I'm going to take both items together. I will entertain a motion to approve the meeting minutes from June 28th and August 9th, and also the personnel document. So moved. Motion made by Mrs. Rodia, seconded by Mr. Fagella. Discussion? Okay, seeing none, Ms. Cupy? Yes. Mrs. Rodia? Yes. Oh, yes, sir. I'm sorry, but you're asking that discussion. Oh, no. <laughs> Voting. Okay. Yeah, we can do a group this time. Mrs. Wilty? Yes. Mrs. Corcoran, who's joining us um, online, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Pagella? Yes. And the chair votes yes, passes 6 0. Moving on to items for information, possible action. Item 3, budget transfers, there were none. Item 4, propose the authorized signature change for the nutrition program. Maybe Mrs. Mangini can just speak to that for uh, before we entertain a motion. Thank you. Required document with the new superintendent's uh, signature so that we can acknowledge that the board is providing him with approval to sign on behalf of the district. Thank you. I will entertain a motion to approve the authorized signature change in nutrition program form. So, motion made by Mrs. Wilty, seconded by Mrs. Rodia. Discussion? Seeing none, Ms. Cupy? Yes. Mrs. Rodia? Yes. Mrs. Wilty? Yes. Mrs. Corcoran? Mr. Pagella? Yes. And the chair votes yes, passes 6 0. Tabled items? Okay. I'm moving on to committee reports. Curriculum committee did not meet. Our next meeting is next Tuesday in the boardroom at 6 30. Finance committee was prior to this. Um, Mrs. Rodia, did you want to just say a few words about our finance meeting? Um, there were no budget transfers, um, and everything seems to be on target. Is there anything that I should be adding to that, Pam? No, as we indicated, it's um, early in the fiscal year, so there wasn't a lot of information to share at this time. Thank you. Thank you. School plan plan has plan and planning has not met. Is there a projected meeting date? September uh, first week. I forget the exact date. Great. Renovation committee? Does that meet? Does that not? 
and the Town Liaison Board of Ed Committee did not meet either. Um, upcoming date, September 2nd, first day of school. September 3rd, kindergarten first day of school. And then school will be closed September 6th in the observation of the Labor Day holiday and September 7th for Rosh Hashanah. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion made by Mrs. Rodia, seconded by Ms. Cupy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, the meeting is adjourned at 734.